Today, uh, another team podcast. I'm sure you guys would know most of the faces here, but we have a special guest, Woody Gamertag, um, from the PKA podcast. Thanks and, for having uh, me. Yeah, welcome. Um, and uh, yeah, we've got Ghost Freak, whoop, Veritas, and then Anton down the bottom. Uh, we're going to be talking about Tarkov and then other random crap at the same time. So if you're new to, uh, to the podcast, we just usually talk for about two hours, talk about random crap, including Tarkov, and then, um, yeah, that's about it. Um, we do have a few topics for today. Um, we'll probably start off with actually drops, seeing that it's pretty much what's happening with Twitch and Tarkov at the moment. Um, how's it? There's like, nothing bad about drops, Pastilli. Don't even. There's nothing bad. There is bad. There is bad. He's What's bad. Not as a streamer. Drops. Not as a streamer. Not as a top streamer. The other streamers are getting two thirds of their normal crowds. Well, okay. So if you've got drops, it works well. Mm-hmm. Obviously, yeah. um, the. There's two things I have an actual issue with this drops session. So it, I guess you could look at it as drops are for two different, um, two different reasons. One for the 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 players to be able to get free loot, and it, it definitely benefits the casual players. The players that don't really have as much time to play, um, they can only do like a couple of raids a day or or a week. They can just leave a Twitch stream open and just get free stuff. They don't even have to watch it. So it really works well for them. And then it benefits the, the content creators and the streamers. And the method and the, the way they've laid out this new system for these 10 days, I think is like perfect. Like there's a different couple of streamers that are really sitting up the top and that's really great um, because you know if it was just, you know, all streamers for 10 days, there'd be like three or four streamers just sitting up there the entire time. So this is giving a really good exposure for a lot of streamers. The downside I have is, in my opinion, they did it way too soon. Like, I haven't really been streaming much the last couple of days because I'm exhausted. They did wipe. It's made me not like the wipe as much. It made me not take it as serious. I streamed I streamed two 24-hour... Actually, it was 24, then a 32-hour, and then I just did like 16-hour streams nonstop, and then they announced the drops, and then I did a 24-hour, and now I can barely get out of bed. But that's just because you've played a lot, right? It's not because the game is any different? But- Correct, but there's a lot of other content creators that don't done the same. There's a lot of. I other... think the drops were like a little too early under the wipe. Maybe if they waited like two weeks, it would have been better. I mean, things aren't found in raid. I like the drops, and here's why: they're teaching me, they're forcing me, or enabling me to learn things about the game I didn't know before. Right? Like I dropped some phased array element. I don't know honeycomb bullshit, and I'm like, all right. What am I going to do with this thing? I can't sell it on the flea market. What trades are available? Where do I need this thing? It gives me weapon parts. All right, I'm not going to drop it on the flea market. What can I do with weapon parts? Where, what do I craft with them? Who trades for them? Uh, I like elements of the game that force me to learn the rest of the game. That's valid. And just so you guys Makes know, sense. Woody's been playing since uh, February. So I went on yeah. his podcast back in the end of January, start of Feb, and then he was like, holy shit, Taco sounds awesome. And then he, he instantly um, bought the game and he's been playing since. He's been hooked. Yeah. I don't know if it worked like that, but you definitely did play straight after the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I think on the podcast, I was like, screw that game. I don't need an addiction. And then it happened anyway. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so th- like there are parts of this game that forced me to learn. This game's complicated. It's super complicated. I don't know if you guys have maybe forgotten how in depth it is because it comes easily to you but the quests for example right some of the quests are great and some of the quests i absolutely detest um gunsmith you might think is lame but i found gunsmith to be complicated my first wipe to go through and it forced me to learn that entire preset mechanic it forced me to pay attention to weapon statistics that i might have otherwise ignored gunsmith is educational when they say hey go to factory and hit all three exits all right to a new player that's educational to you. It's just a little detour. It's a quest you can do in a few seconds, but to a new guy, it's like, how the heck do I get around here? How do I get safely? Can I do those underground tunnels and, and not kill myself? The quests that teach you are awesome. The quests that force you to bang your head against the RNG again and again and again are punishing and mean. And (laughs) that's, that's what I would change about the quest. What quests don't you like? Well, uh, okay for some reason i couldn't find a gosh darn spark plug and i know the kinds of things they spawn in but as as common an item as that is i bang my head against the damn spark plug for ages i just got it last night last night we're weeks into this raid i have hundreds of raids i'm looking for goddamn spark plugs for ages did it get you to explore at all maybe 
no, I felt like I hit up the same sorts of things, you know, like where, where are the toolboxes, where the whatever. It, there are things that get me to explore, you know, place a signal jammer on this uh, tower big satellite that, dish yeah, yeah. Or, or whatever. So I do, you, do you use the wiki for those types of things or for gunsmith? Did you use the wiki or any videos or... The wiki. Yeah, I'm it? all about that. The only thing I use videos for were finding extracts, which I pretty much have now. But um, the so videos imagine if are you nice. didn't have the wiki. How, <laughs> how that, do you think? School? How how good do you think gunsmith would be? Because I, I'm of the opinion that okay. the gunsmith tasks are they would be educational if they were a little bit if there wasn't like one or two or three specific ways of building it. If it was build a gun with you know less than you know uh ergo this these stats bad. but yeah. it wasn't it wasn't so specific that you literally needed like what what they end up doing is i'm assuming that the devs go and build one configuration of the gun and they fold the stock and they take the bullet out of the chamber and they take the magazine out and they're like this is the exact thing we want um as opposed to like letting you say oh i have all these attachments can i build something that meets the criteria I think without the wiki, half of the things would be fucking impossible. <laughs> I think that's a really good point. I think there's room for improvement in the gunsmith quests, but I do still put them in the category of educational and therefore good. You know, you know what else is bad? Not just the RNG thing, but the like get this many headshots while suffering from a tremor, bro. Like yeah, that. Yeah, there is just trying to hurt my now. feelings. Like it's right, realism. Yeah. <laughs> that's just, no, that quest right? is so dumb. There's you don't no even do it. You, you just ex you just accept that quest, play the game, and if it happens, it happens. Like it's too hard to try it. No, there's it, an it, actual easy way now. So you know when you die in a raid, and at the end you can quick heal. Now you get broken arms all the time. Like you don't, they don't automatically heal. So you actually keep the broken arm, and then you can just go back into factory with the broken arm. Forty seconds later, you've got the tremor. So you just oh, treat factory. Sorry. I just, just spawn in a factory, go up the first set of stairs I can find, jump off, break a leg, <laughs> wait a little bit, pop a painkiller, and then like, just try to get headshot. Those are good tips, but they're not, they're not, not teaching me lore no, of not. the game that makes me good. They're not making oh, it doesn't me make learn any the sense. game. No. They're not, no, yeah, they, stupid. They, I, I still put that kind of quest in the not good category. The ones that force me to, like, heck, there's a lot of quests that tell me to go to Shoreline, a map that maybe I wouldn't have explored it. Right out of the gate, I liked customs. I don't know. I just got used to customs. I found my way around. And left to my own devices, I might have just mained customs for a whole darn white. But the quests say, Woody, you got to go to Shoreline and find every ambulance. You got to go to factory and find every exit. And that forced me to expand my horizons. And therefore, that's a good quest. The, the mark of a good quest, in especially a beginner quest in a game, is something that it, it gets you to explore or discover new locations new mechanics um new you know new areas new items that you might not otherwise use and it should give you enough information to be able to like go out on a limb and explore and find it yourself without requiring something like a wiki unfortunately too many of the quests are like you have to find this little envelope under a pixel under a box in the corner of a thing and the game doesn't tell you like anything someone just found it two years ago and then wrote a wiki article about it um those are ones that you know maybe did you should play be... this game pre-wiki because to me the wiki's part I of did. the game it always has been yeah so I'm the first it. quest cycle was so fun because it was like i didn't stream back then but i would just watch streamers because like everyone was trying to figure it out so i would just like watch streams while doing it and learning it the it um deadly slob was my my instructor like i learned from deadly slob he had youtube videos that were like half an hour long explaining all the quests and i would watch yep. them and be like oh my god like this is so confusing but i figured it out now like and when i first started playing that was so rough the only thing that i noticed from deadly slob was it doesn't take half an hour to tell me to go to a location and pick something up and that's why i made my guides um because he's guys were really in depth and they gave a lot of information about what you should be looking out for in different locations and that whereas for me i feel like there's a lot of people out there just know how situational awareness works but they just want to know where the fuck the item is so that's why the wiki I is mine. really good for that just yeah show exactly me for the filing cabinet that's all i need maybe a big <laughs> red arrow that that's that's the help i need so the, the wiki does a great job tarkov would be hard without it yeah 
Yeah. Oh hell yeah. It's kind of like a shame the though of how Tarkov can be improved, and it's it's like a plus for the wiki and a big minus for the game. It's um, such I a big like minus. It, it takes away the mystery. On... Yeah. It's a so, Google Quest. Without it. Imagine, Imagine if they like described with some hints. You know, someone said it was over by an area, a fenced-in area with two vans on a in a train car. You know, something like give me a. And I actually don't know. Maybe that maybe the the quest language says this now, but like you know, oh, and he might have put it in a small, tiny little corner. He might have hit it well. Keep an eye out. You know, something like that. If they just said that, well, then now it's infinitely less unreasonable to you know expect somebody to be able to explore and find it. You'd have some to have them, randomization. Some of them do. Oh, sorry. You'd yeah. have to have no, something some random in the game for that. I'm oh, sorry. You go. You go. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's good. Not gonna do it. <laughs> okay, okay, I'll go. He muted himself. All right, you win. <laughs> I uh, was gonna you'd go. have to have some randomization for that to work, right? Because otherwise, that picture of the filing cabinet is gonna supersede the hints. But if it was anywhere in that office or anywhere upstairs, and this is the big red customs area I'm referring to, like if it was anywhere in there, then the Wikipedia couldn't just snapshot where it is, like under the desk on top. It would of have the twelve desk. snapshots because ultimately speaking, uh, there's a well, finite number of places that they were going to make it spawn. Um, unless they make the loot system completely different, there's really only going to be. And we discussed so many. that. But when you get to a dozen, they become less valuable. Maybe you just look around. We discussed that about like how it could just be in any room of the dorms. It doesn't have to be specifically two hundred three or three hundred three, but you actually have to search the dorms. And it makes and every key and every room important valuable. and relevant and valuable. Maybe you make like the drawers openable, and you have to open every drawer for the specific key. You gotta flip the bed. You gotta yeah. rustle through the paper. No, if I was king, king, if I was king of Tarkov, no map would have more keys than can fit in a sick case. <laughs> I would probably triple the amount of keys just so I can well, make gold. Nah. <laughs> Unlock the doors. I'm, I'm willing to hold whatever that is—23 keys or something, 24 keys. But uh, it's probably not a prime. It's 25. Number. In any case. Is it? Okay. Oh, in, in any case, I'm willing to hold a bunch of keys, but you got to let them fit in a sick case. Otherwise, that just stinks. So maybe you don't give like a... Oh, sorry. I was going to say maybe give a description to reserve keys because every reserve key just says military base. Military base. It's so hard to know those keys. Yeah, it's valid. Yeah, well, if I go and look in the top drawer of my uh, little desk over here, I've got a handful of, of keys to things I'm sure are very important. Couldn't tell you what any of them are for. <laughs> I'll tell you what. So one day I'm just going to have to go to every lock and try every key. And can you it's, imagine what that would be like in Tarkov where it's this entire city and you just found a key and you're like, oh, shit. Well, that's kind of how it would be, though, you know, this is how we, fucking... we were playing. I was playing the other day and we talked about this idea and it, it's such a funny but f cool idea. So if you have a key tool and there's one key on it. When you go to unlock a door, the key tool comes out with the one key and you open the door. But if you have a key tool and there's like 15 keys on it, you've got to like take the key tool out and you've got to like rustle around through all 15 <laughs> keys to get the right one and then open the door. I so want like shake. If, if you had one key in a sick case, you would find the key instantly. But if there's 25 keys in a sick case, you would have to like fumble and make all this noise. That'd be sick. It just I think this kind of sadism qualifies you as a Tarkov developer. Yeah, bro. No, 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 no. would make the animation uninterruptible too. Dude, <laughs> dude, if you kill someone while unlocking a door, the key they drop the, the key on the ground. Oh, I want oh, that. Oh, yep, oh. yep. And you can how you would you would be clearing out like customs third floor yep. for ten minutes before I You'd would throw a smoke grenades. Mark room. I would love smoke grenades a purpose. I would love That's that weird. idea. I would 100% oh love God. it. You sadistic fucks. <laughs> don't Swipe in the red key all. card. I'd be like in the cross of that room on the other side, just looking through like my, my Valde, just waiting for them to go. <laughs> Easy red key card, boys. Easy red key card. <laughs> <Really isn't. laughs> so going back to the drops, though. So you like, I actually do really like the idea of drops. Um, I don't think it was a good idea to have them so early. Um, it's great for a streamer, and I'm sure it's great for really casual players and that. But overall, as the actual game, we're, this is going to go into another topic a bit later on, but people are really geared right now. I know you yeah. like, two weeks ago, I brought this up and you know there was a bit of debate over it, but people are pretty geared right now. 
Not good ammo though. No one has good ammo, I've noticed. You know why though? Why? Because they've Cause made no it. Has... Prepper has like 90 rounds of BS and 120 rounds of BT. And you shoot that in one raid and you're like, well, three hours later. Well, so, I mean, we've talked about this before, though, about how, you know, a lot of us had fun, a lot more fun back in the day when people were a little bit more tanky. Now this is like, this is, interestingly enough, kind of the magic world that we all wanted where people don't have great ammo, but everybody's got level five armor. Um, I don't know. Like, I, I also don't see tons of people super super geared it, it, it they end up being funky combinations yeah um where you have like a level four rig and like a level two helmet you know and like a modestly modded adar or something it's 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 a unique combination of gear that i've never seen before but i it's a, it, i'm not seeing tons of the only people i see running around that i kill that are wearing like slick alton i kill them and it's ttv in their tag it's like it, <laughs> it's, it's almost the perfect time to play it's a really good variety of loot uh, yeah so I mean, in the drops now, they dropped this uh, slick, the Ronin or the samurai armor. I forgot the name. Tactics, and there's another armor they dropped. They dropped tier five, tier six armors. Did they drop any thermal scopes? No, I, I don't. I don't think they did. Can you imagine if they did. Please don't. I, they please. did last. They were dropping T sevens last time. No, I'm saying it's a good thing they didn't. Again, I think. That's why I don't so think they dropped it. it too early. Like, Pastilli says the drops are too early. Bro, I haven't gotten rich off these drops. You know, like, I... <laughs> it's hard I, I, got a, I got an SKS, so I'm, I know I'm rich. I got right? Like, thanks for both the freaking weapons, parts, and three door kicker hats. But these drops have not changed my financial world at all. But there's about 70 drops. 70 to, 70 to 100 drops. I am collecting add drops like 24 hours away. By the way, shout out to you kings who just forward me on to the next drop enabled streamer when you're finished. I appreciate that. But <laughs> I, like, I've hardly missed a minute of all these drops, even though I was on vacation this weekend. And oh, I am yeah. not wealthy from this. And that's pretty much what we've been doing with um, the people we've been hosting. It's just always to a 24 hour drop streamer. But yeah, um, I, I think you got to look bigger picture. I don't, I don't know if it's... They were a tad too early. I mean, when was the wipe? Two weeks ago? What's the harm? Three weeks They're ago. They're not down the yeah. They haven't changed well, the economy. When I'm getting some inexpensive AK-74Ms or whatever from weapons parts, like, it's not... There's no problem here. It's and not... The I server, don't think it's Testing horrible. the server stability is also, like... It's also something that, that isn't insignificant. Think about how broken everything was last time they did drops in terms of the performance. Yeah. If you didn't tell me, if I didn't log on to Twitch, I would not know the drops were happening. You couldn't say that about last time because you wouldn't be able to play the True. game and Only... the, the economy would change. But now I... I, nothing's did changed for me. They did, drops for the last... did they do drops in a sale together? Is that the real server problem? What happened was they did the drops around Christmas time. It was just after Christmas over New Year's. And... Tarkov took it like a, a wave across Twitch and it just had sales like crazy. I don't know how many they sold. But over January, the player base just, I, I reckon it probably went 10 times as big. It went from 3K a day to over uh, like 100K a day, like 200, I think 300K at one point. Oh, so, okay, the October uh, wipe had 30,000 yeah. concurrent. The October wipe had 30,000 concurrent. The wipe we just had was 200,000 concurrent players. Yeah, so. Nuts. That's a big jump. Wait, so we had, was that seven times? Yeah, since October. 30,000 and 200? Mm -hmm. and, and, and the server, I mean, like the game performance, what's and we can talk about this later. But, yeah. but I think, I mean, I don't know about you guys, but the queue times are fast. I'm not experiencing, I'm experiencing um, wicked bad stutters all over again, but but no <laughs> server lag really or any nothing more than normal, I'll say. But today was kind of bad, Veritas. I don't know if yeah. you played today and yesterday no, it started, played. but this morning it was bad. It was like good, and then today it was just kind of weird. And what's the symptom, Anton? What is it? Stutters? You're talking about? Uh, no, like just the back end going back down, end. and usually and what happens you can't join a raid. is everyone will just stop moving, and you'll just keep running around, and then you'll find a scab, and I you're like, that scab's that just so sitting long. there. And then you'll shoot the scav and nothing happens. And then you'll just go, and then it'll say oh, you died to Remember, the scav. though, that was every Tarkov raid at one point. Do you remember yeah. that? I mean, we like, didn't have it's any lag when better. we played yesterday, Pest, for what, a few hours? 
Yeah, it's pretty. Have, good I mean, other time. than other than like the the ping, like we, I don't know, our servers were pretty fine. I had trouble last night. You know, like I, I shot a scab with way more bullets than it takes to kill him, and he never nah, died. Dude, he just you sort of ran in place all night long. You know, for the rest of the raid. Uh, I've had issues where I become invisible to my teammates, and that's a rare and one. Talk. And that the thing about really this, rare. you are still in the map somewhere. Like this is no joke. You are mm -hmm. actually physically still standing somewhere, so you will be running around. You can kill everyone, right? And they're like, "I died to invisible cheaters," and it's like, no. There's actually an issue where players can go invisible by accident, and I then. Got and, uh, and I you could just die because someone kills you from the other side of the map. A scav will kill you on the other side of the map where your actual body is. A scav killed me where I thought I was. And I, I was bold. I thought, like, I'm invisible. I can do anything. I can mess around for the rest of this raid. Because a scav for client side, well, not client side, but, like, a, there's, a, there's a, a difference between what other people sure. see and what, like, a scav will see. They're not client side, but I'm sure there's <laughs> elements there that where, like, they didn't desync in the yep, same they way did. that the other players did. Yeah, so, yeah exactly. So, um, uh, yeah, anyway, I died to an AI scab embarrassingly because I played stupid because I thought I was, like, pretty much had hacks. It's not embarrassing to die to AI scabs, especially now. No. They're pretty nuts. Um, I have a, uh, a video project for someone in the chat. Um, if you could take a compilation of people dying to scabs and somehow incorporate, like, predator footage with the scabs as to what the scabs see, that would be a good uh, <laughs> they're looking at the scabs. I was just laughing about like what scabs. What do you think scabs see? They see like they see heat. They see. Have you ever seen the Matrix? <laughs> just ones and zeros. <laughs> yeah. I think she's it's gonna be mad at me when I say I haven't seen shaped, it. A PMC shaped that, like X uh, void walk through the the waterfall of of ones and zeros, and then they just aim at that. What if it was just like all zeros? And it's just one one, and it's like one. Yo, the scabs are better. <laughs> that's, your, that's that's head eyes. Yeah. That's one one. Head it's eyes. just where they lock onto. I was messing around with scab detection like yesterday and today, and I was proning and like crawling, and they couldn't see me that good when I was prone. Like they took a while, and I was in a bush, and they like I was basically invisible to them in the bush. They seem a little better right now. I like that scabs are better most of the time. You know, I, I lost a fight last night. I don't know if he had a hunter or Mosin. I'm not one of those sound geniuses yet. But uh, I'm in interchange. I'm on one side of the shelving unit. He spots me. I go to the other side. And you know how that works. Their aggro kind of stays where they last saw you. On the other side, I just got instant headshotted. It, was, there was, it wasn't like I could do a better play. And I'm like, man, that feels almost unfair, that death. But oftentimes, I just like that they go prone or they run if you shoot them a little faster than they seem to used to. And I, I don't mind the AI scabs getting better so long as they miss their first shot. I want them to be uh, like I want the AI scabs to be a like some on the spectrum of average player to like the scav bosses should be you know as as realistic as close as possible to some of the best real human players. But, but unfortunately, they end up as completely oblivious. You're either not there and they just have their back to you and they walk backwards screaming through you at a door or they drop shot 180 insta headshot <laughs> while a grenade comes out of their head through the air. So if they don't hit you for some reason, the grenade will explode. I think and that, I think that never some, feels good. I think there's some scabs that are like actually harder, though. I think Nikita said this, that like some yeah, normal scabs are right. just better than other ones. And... I mean, yeah, don't forget there's a parameter wrong, that's percent chance to instantly fuck. That is like yeah. a literal variable somewhere in the server. I, I've seen it before. It's I saw called like a the JSON blob. Did you really? It, what the fuck? Yeah. It no, it, it, like it, I, I forget exactly what it is, but it, it has something to do with like percent chance to instantly fuck that's you or nuts. something. It's like headshot or nade. So there's a um last what we had. Percent chance to instantly fuck me? <laughs> I don't know if I'm keeping up. There were no scabs in my high school though. <laughs> nice nice well we could we could this would be a great uh social experiment a great segue into one of the topics that you wanted to talk about <laughs> <laughs> okay. um last what scavs had vault grenades and we all read and we're like no nikita please it's just bullshit and then he gave him more no so yeah he gave him more this what like, nikita we spoke about this <laughs> last one today bro I go, Nikita, we spoke about this last wipe. Vog grenades on scavs is just lame. You have nothing you can do. And he goes, I know. They should be scared. And I'm like, what? That's not the answer that you should be giving. 
Like, what are you meant to do? Like, oh, yep, a scab. Oh, poof. it's like, because they land on top of you. They don't, they don't miss grenades. It's, it's not. I mean, imagine, imagine a game where every thirty seconds there's a little dice in the lower right hand corner that rolls, and if a one comes up, you die. That is a like the worst kind of game to play, right? Like you're playing no another game, but there's a, a mechanic where that happens. You wouldn't want to play that game, right? Because it would just feel like I'm being punished for nothing. That's we kind of talking like about one labs? end of the spectrum where, yeah, I mean, I, pretty much. <laughs> I phrased it this way for a decade, right? Like in a single player game, in my opinion, the worst thing it can do is have me lost and not know where to go and just frustrated. In a multiplayer game, the capital sin is when I die and it's not my fault. You know, if I'm outplayed, you know, hey, that happens, right? That's going to happen more and more as I age. But if I just get insta tapped and there wasn't a better decision I could have made, if I couldn't have aimed faster, I just took my life away unfairly. That's not a good mechanic. If I were Nikita and I wanted to make the scavs better, I'd make them better defensively, right? If you hit Killa, he should instantly be relocating. Right. Instead of letting sometimes you can just cheese him in the leg while he's not looking at you 30 times in a row until he dies. Make him run. Right. If you shoot a scab, they should instantly get harder to hit because their defense is better. The offense just one tapping you. That's not the mechanic I like. And that's because real people aren't going to hit the first shot and real people are going to react. They're going to move the cover. They're going to do, you know, so they won't the more. The scabs will, yeah, exactly. The closer scabs get to realistic behavior and realistic aim and reaction times the better they'll feel in my opinion you know because when you have a really good fight against someone who's like really smart tactically and they're moving and they're shooting and even if they're missing they're going back and forth and like those fights feel good even when you lose mm -hmm. it's when you die because you froze or because of lag or because of a bug or because of a grenade just went in the air and air bursted like you should be able to have options and, and like the better player will choose the best option and will be able to win because of it. Um, and that's what, that's what I think we need to, but I mean, making AI is hard, right? So I've always argued the fact that um, they don't need to make scabs any harder than they already are. The way I would like to see scabs become harder is you have like, when one starts shooting scabs come from other areas to help assist or for doing a flank or just, you know, or they run away to other scabs to help out. Like, you know, like when you're in like, oh, I'm getting shot at, Veritas, help. And like, you know, I'd be like running behind the wall. Like, and then, you know, you wouldn't come because you'd say, fuck you, Pest. But, you know, another <laughs> player might actually assist me. I want your me. shit. Exactly. They you want my tag. Each other. But like, the, I would secret. much pr <laughs> prefer intelligent play styles from scavs, even if it is just running away to another group of scavs or other scavs from other areas coming to assist from the gunshots, then just dial up their aimbot or dial up their reaction time because that is just frustrating. I feel like I'm playing Rainbow Six Siege Terrorist Hunt where like yeah. I got like a nano to pick shoot and then it's like, oh, I'm dead. Like That's a great idea. Heck, maybe if I shoot at one scav, just whatever it is, 250 yards away, new ones spawn in. And that's the mechanic where they come to help. Did, did, did anyone actually try out this? And I was going to like try and <laughs> try it out with some of the shitty tasks, um, like for decontamination service, right? Has anyone actually tried bringing in a hatchling just to follow them and yes. just have a hatchling behind them? As, no, because the, the cursed and tagged kicks in and the scavs ignore you as a full yeared person and they just keep running at the hatchling. So you could just like have the scavs run past you and you could shoot them. And use them I as bait. That routinely, Pistilli. We, oh. we, like, we go to, um, we call it VSS hallway, but there's like an S hallway that points towards the silos in factory. You know oh, it yeah, for yeah, sure, yeah. underground. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, 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 yeah. I know we, it now. Yeah. We go there. One guy intentionally comes in tagged and cursed. And then we get bodies eight feet tall. You know, it gets to be that the bodies provide cover for the next victims as they come walking <laughs> in. And you can get XP. You don't even have to loot them. Just touch all. You touch like sixteen touch bodies F and it's a decent effect. run. Yep. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Anyway, yeah, we do that all the time. It works. It's fun. Yeah, I was actually going to try and do it this wipe, but I never got around to doing it. It's too busy. Well, you have to have four friends, so that's a challenge. Four friends. Why can't you just do it with one friend? Oh, I guess you could. I didn't think of that. God damn it! 
<laughs> Do we edit this at all? <laughs> yeah, don't worry. This isn't live. This isn't live. Majority of the server. We'll cut it and we'll cut this out and post. Have you guys ever had like an experience where you're fighting somebody and you're like this player scab, like this son of a bitch? Because you see him like peek out, pop a couple of shots, and then every now and then you kill him and you look and it was an AI scab and you're like that one passed the touring test like that one whatever that is snapshot his code because that was perfect and then other times like i said they just go opachki backwards through a doorway <laughs> and it's like what are you doing they just stare at you and don't shoot my favorite of the raiders that walk backwards through doorways when they crouch they just like do you ever get cocky and you're like looking at them for the content the and then they go skirt. flip around and kill you and then everybody laughs at you Whoever the fucking made up the power slide, the yeah, power slide oh, ultimate man, move. It's, the worst. it's his it's killer's finisher, dude. Oh my god, you can't. I've, I've survived maybe one of them. Every other time, instant headshot. <laughs> Fuck. But yeah, what about um clean? Clean at the moment is trying to buy up and sell every ASVL on the flea market, so no one uses them. I blame them all. clean. He wants to vendor them all to the uh, traders. So you, as soon I've as people one. put them up. Is anybody using them? Yeah. There's yeah. yeah there's How much are why they? Are so, why are things so different? I know half a chat's going to say you don't play the game anymore, even though I play for the first like six hours. Of Valorant every streamer. Stream. Valorant streamer. <laughs> um, so, but like, I, I, where, where is it? Maybe it's just EU like, or Anton. Are you seeing them? Like, where are these people? I what people? Don't... The VSS in Val I users? died to one. I died to a Val today, but I did like five factories before dying to one. I mean, there's. That, do you see them all over the place enough where someone would need to buy them all up? I don't think so. No, I'm not I don't really that. see I, them. They're kind of expensive to run. You know, mm -hmm. the magazines are thirty thousand a peach. If you get the right? big mags, you know, Let's get small mags. Well, yeah. twenty round oh, mags SP five bullets. Yeah, <laughs> twenty round mags SP five. Trust me. It's, and that, that was that's where I was headed to SP5. I did better last wipe with it. Maybe it's a small sample size, but uh, 20 round mag SP5. And sometimes I'm losing gunfights. You know, maybe I'm taking too long to get on target. Maybe I'm spreading my bullets around. Well, it's one mag per person. So just keep that in mind. It's pretty much one mag per person and then a reload, as opposed to like a, a Vepper, where even PS will two tap pretty much everybody. So well, you come here to represent the newer mag. players. And sometimes. 20 bullets, not enough. <laughs> <laughs> That's valid. Those That's um, why you need yeah. to buy a Vepper, put a dot on it, and, <laughs> and get used to just click, 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 and try to aim for the head, and eventually they'll start hitting more often than they'll miss, and yeah, you'll understand. be better off for it. My you're not wrong about strategy like, is to spray them down through the armor. Maybe that's the wrong one. I don't know. You're not wrong about like there not being that many vowels, though. There's really not. But they're so cheap, though. Like, why aren't there more in a way? Like, they're so, so they're 50k. Right. Has Nikita made him 250k now? What? Dude, nobody. The thing is that nobody bought them no. before. Nobody was buying vowels and modding them. They were all getting them from raiders and from players. And Nobody's going true. labs, and the players don't have them. So the supply is just limited. Yeah, that's when they the gave when they gave raiders vows, that's when like Val kind of became meta, did it not? That's, that's when it started. It, it didn't so, all of a so sudden true. become good one day. It like, was so just the supply. Mm. Yeah. So the trade from the beginning of the wipe, the trade has been zeroed every single time when I go to proper. Every single time I go to proper, the the VSS trade is gone. So. And then where are they now, all? I, they're buying they're all the. Being list them. They relist them because they're making more money. You, you can't, can't relist. Them. You can't. The gun. Yeah. Oh, right. The gun. They need the to. Gun. They need to. They need yeah. to take the guns and. Uh, they need to make them found in raid. They're making like, literally more money doing the trade, flipping it over and then selling it every single. So they're time. taking they're all cleans it. money. How, how much does the barter trade cost for the for the VSS? I, I need to go check. Chat, tell me. Well, you're I talking can, about can, selling it work. just back to the trader, right? Like, not even flea marking it? No, you can flea market any gun in the game at the moment. Well, because the Val is 200k, so the resale is like 90. The resale is really You good. need four scissors and seven scrapers. Oh, what the Oh, wait, no, the four, four rest rest the Val. What are we talking scissors? about? Four scissors? They did change it, though. What are 10 filters? That, the Sorry, no, 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 10 filters the or... Is there another what, Woody? Is there another name for scissors? What are scissors? Are they the long? The M, the metal cutting scissors. They're the long. 
They're like yeah, shears, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, I was looking at the level three trade, not the level. The level two trade is yeah, ten scissors. They're from mag cases. So it would yeah. cost you about 115k to do the barter trade, and then if you could sell them on the flea market for like 150k, you're laughing. Yeah, but the, keep in mind that there's also the fee. But now that we just mentioned it, now everybody's going to do it. So what's going to happen is the price of those items in the trade on the flea market is now just going to go up to yeah. like a hundred. You know, what, what is there? Fifteen things you have to trade. It's going to be. Uh, two thirds of it of the cost divided by ten, and then one third divided by five for the fucking filters and the. Pretty sure they changed the drop rate for the BSS as well. So, the reason why it's not in use is not is is just supply. The gun was never, too. never more OP. It never became OP. It the supply went up, and that's why everybody used it. And then everybody used it, and so everybody died to it, and it was just like a big snowball. I want to what do you think? Uh, hold on, hold on. I'm sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah. What, do, what do you think a proper level for the flea market would be? Ooh, I think ten is fine. Yeah, well, I've heard no! people. Yeah. No! Damn it. Dying of fire, Anton. Because I, I think you guys hit level like twenty. <laughs> Finally, <laughs> someone needed to say it. <laughs> you guys hit level twenty-five in a day or two and don't understand how hard that is. Like, it, that's a really big deal. Ten is long enough. I could hear. If, if you wanted to make something like, hey, you, you got to be therapist level two to get in labs or something like it, I'm, I'm listening to that because there is a lot of great loot that comes out of labs. But flea market, come on, bro. Like I, I'm financially struggling here. If I can't sell my stuff on the flea market, then I, I just never turn the corner. I never get my hideout done. It, it's, it's too long. I actually agree with this for the fact that I'll be doing my raid series at the moment and I'm trying to play it on a more sensible scale not because like because way i usually level is i just charge in and it's almost like i don't know the way like you know the wave attacks where you just keep powering through until you get your quest done um whereas i'm actually trying to survive a bit more which i'm not i'm dying heaps but um i don't have level 10 yet so i'm holding it i still don't have certain keys i don't have certain ways of getting past certain tasks like i can't get the three mr armors like three or four instead of getting those done so everything's just held up because i can't get the flea market yet um and so i, I could i can understand from that perspective um i actually don't like the idea of putting a level cap on it per se but i actually think there should be behind a task but the task shouldn't be like a hundred tasks in it should be like just i don't know 10 in total tasks in i don't know exactly I, how it would work but it's part of the I tutorial and at the end of the tutorial it would be it I watch your stream a lot, Pastilli, and you have success with bad guns, right? I kind of don't. So I have this equation I need to make. Like right now I need to go into factory and get some office area kills. Cool. I can go in with an M4 and probably win a bunch of gunfights, but man, it hurts if I lose because I'm not rich. I can go in with a scab gun of some sort, and I'm not even sure which is financially better because I lose a lot with that lousy gun. Whereas you go in there pistol only or sometimes with a hatchet or something and, and find success because you I have to this... know which guns and which ammo oh as a beginner player early are economically viable Incredible. like 762 ps in an sks or lps in a mosin or um if they take either of those and try to get factory office kills and for me it's a struggle i would rather have full auto you got to actually, okay, you got to take into account that when I started playing Tarkov, the only map I played was Factory for probably a thousand hours. Like, I didn't play any other map. In Australian servers, when Tarkov first came out, the only two maps you found players on was Customs and Factory. And Customs was like two to three players, but Factory was always full. So for me to find my fun, it was on Factory. So I know that map. I can generally outposition people nearly always on that map because of that. So when I hear you four say, ah, flea market's too easy, you've never said, why would anyone be broke? It's like, oh, let me explain. Because, <laughs> you know, because sometimes I walk in there with a half million dollar kit and still lose a gunfight. Or every time I walk in there with a $80,000 kit, I lose a gunfight. It and happens, happens to me all the time. It ain't, I mean, maybe not these guys, but I'm, I'm with you there, man. Um, yeah. So, yeah, so Veritas always is always broke. This, like, I, yeah. I think I heard... Now, two, three weeks ago, you guys were talking about like, oh man, everybody's rich already. Everyone's so kitted. Maybe we should make it harder for us outstanding players to get kitted because we're just bullying players like Woody. 
But I feel differently. I feel like, bro, I know what I did. When I walked in there with Untar armor and a gun that scabs would laugh at, I knew that my odds were weak, were bad in the first place. Uh, you know, but I went in on a budget run. And if I go in there with my M4, which is my personal favorite gun, if I go in there with a the done out M4 and I, I can win some more, but it hurts so much more when I lose. These are the choices that players at my level have to make. And they're the reason we like Tarkov. Because but I, I think I think one of the things that you'll learn though, the more you play, is that you you're only increasing your chances of success from like the beginner and lower mid level gear to the high level gear by a small percentage. We're not talking three, four times. We're talking like five, ten percent. Because there are plenty of times where I go in as a veteran with the best stuff and I'll get either killed by an unlucky scav grenade. Who, and then I kind of just get picked up by scav player scavs or by lower level guys who just come across me, you know, my corpse there, um, and get something for free. Or I'll get killed by a dude with a Mosin or a, a, an SKS who's naked because he surprised me or he got lucky or I screwed up my aim or something. So it's not impossible. Um, and early game guns and ammo can be really viable. Don't think that you are at a huge disadvantage. The disadvantage that you have is just experience with the maps and the movement and like the gunfights. Because if if we gave you level six armor and level six helmet and put you against Pestily naked with a Mosin, Pestily <laughs> wins that the vast majority of the time. So it just shows you that it's the experience and not the gear. But I know that the gear makes you feel better. Dude, but they, I better gear makes example. me a better player, in particular lower recoil, right? My, my, my shots go all over the place when I have high recoil. I'm spraying left, right, and, 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 and like in my mind, I put 30 Three shots on target. And then when I look at the after action report, it's like four of those hit? Really? Oh, man. But if I had my meta M4, you know, 20 of those would have hit. He would have died. But that's the key. But the armor, the armor is only going to protect you from one to two more bullets, whereas the gun will make it more likely that you hit those one or two bullets because in Tarkov, whether you have level six armor, um, you know, or level two armor, or you're naked. The time to kill is anywhere from one bullet to five. So you're diminishing returns with armor, but not helmets with attachments. Helmets are pretty much cosmetics. You know, I, I wear a penis helmet even late white, so people underestimate me. That's my strategy. No, dude, I've I'm been arguing that's, helmet. That's, that's, that's the, good strategy. Got a high ricochet <laughs> chance, man. It's a, that, that helmet will save you. Yeah, I've actually if I put a on video. an air train, People give me their A game. I don't want their A game. I want to be underestimated. They're I've actually got a video that I've. I'm hesitant to post at the moment that actually talks about why you should only wear that helmet. I actually, yeah. I actually believe that that's the only helmet you should wear at the moment, unless you're wearing a face shield. Because Is the mind game part of it? No. What it's, about a Keck helmet? No. I had a Keck helmet stop five four five. The slow it, MT. The Keck helmet. No, the Keck helmet. The slow MT. Keck helmet. Is that the Keck helmet? Like air. It's the slow MT. Call it that. Uh, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't you know, know what you're MT, about. Somebody it's like a fake out. fast MT, it's, so it's, it's slow. It's you get it in. It's the fast MT. That's the T1 helm. A class. Oh my class god! Is that okay. why you're calling it slow MT? Oh my fucking god! I thought I Did didn't get it. Over Anton? Now what are you calling it? <laughs> the Keck helmet. Okay. <laughs> Can I get some uh, Keck W's in chat? <laughs> Ashley, who yeah. is Mike? Who's Mike? Who's Mike? Who's Mike? Anton. Lots of mics. Is my mic on? <laughs> Um, that's a nice microwave you got hanging there, Woody. I'm yeah. glad you like it. I, I can't. Wait, what the fuck? I didn't even notice that. Wait, is that like a JPEG <laughs> of a? What or is that fuck? hanging from the ceiling? It's hanging from his his weight I, rack, did, isn't it? I did not come here to clout chase or talk about my stream, but I do this thing where I die. I do push ups and pull ups, and that's a pull up oh, yeah. bar. And there's a microwave <laughs> hanging from it. I legit thought that was a PNG dude that you had yeah, behind you. Wanna... No. <laughs> No, I'm impressed. By the that... microwave, I want to see Pestily do yeah, I, ten pull-ups with a microwave for... around his waist. You could, yeah, you could get on the waist belt yeah, and have the microwave hanging there. Oh, you might... oh, I want yeah. to see Pestily. Do you think old. you could do that? Give me some slack. I could do one or two, I bet. But uh, um, yeah, I went to the guest house and stole the microwave and hung it from my pull-up bar for the show. He's got a guest house. It's the wife's <laughs> What the fuck? Now I, I want to uh... challenge Pestily to a, a pull-up competition. To see no, who can do, do 10 pull-ups with a microwave around their waist first. I'd, I'd beat you. Maybe. I can do seven, and that's I not really... a seven joke. 
Uh, <laughs> Pestily did. He was shaking when he was holding up half of my weight. Uh, with one, so I don't know. With I my like left arm. Confident. Just gonna put that out there. With my left. Arm. I feel like. Yeah, your left arm is is more massive than my entire body. The weight difference between me and you guys should count for a microwave, right? I should be able to do this without the microwave. Uh, here Fair we go. Spare. Everybody, everybody thinks that uh, that like muscle strength and has is more to do with, with to like power to weight ratio. Skinny guys can do pull ups way easier than fucking big meaty jacked boys. Just so y'all know, it's true. Talk about the quads, mate. Big quads, lots of push pu uh, pull ups. It's about the calves. Calf muscles, quads. Yeah. <laughs> what does quads have to do with with pull-ups? I don't you'll, know. You'll work it out. You'll work it out. I'm just trying to fit in. If the bigger quads, the more they weigh, and you can't. <laughs> I don't know. Dick size could. <laughs> I want. Okay, I don't want to get challenge. too gross. Finish that sentence. Yeah, yeah. yeah no, that sentence. <laughs> yeah, Anton. What's your thought on that with penis size? Penis size. I, was, talk, talk, talk. I was wondering, like, how much different does everyone's dick weigh? But I don't. Like, I mean, is there <laughs> a difference? Well, like, for race car drivers, they go for lightweight and small people, or like, they want like a small package to fit in the car. So, I mean, that could be some. I don't know. If you were getting full meta, do you have to shave yeah, your pubes as well? Is that where we're going with this? No, no, no body hair, because I'm probably going to start winning that one right. soon. Then. <laughs> There are no words. <laughs> Where do we go from here? I don't know. We're thinking about everyone's penis sizes, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> no, not sizes. The weight, which the I'm not weight. even sure how you, how you weight. weigh that. Is that uh, flaccid or under I mean, you uh, influence? You could do like the dunk tank method where you then have to like subtract the weight. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure. Are we including the testicles or just the penis? I feel like the ball should be included, right? <laughs> If you're gonna measure yeah, manhood, the part. then measure all the manhood. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I, 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 well, what, well, what about your elephantitis, uh, Ghost? Like, that's unfair. <laughs> that's not a fair. He's struggling right there. <laughs> <laughs> we've lost him. Less than an hour into the show, we've turned it into PKA. Welcome, boys. <laughs> <laughs> Episode 479 of PKA. Oh. <laughs> we've got Kyle. <laughs> One of you guys is going to prison. How is PK? I haven't Doing watched well. it about two, one or two episodes. The last one I watched was the um, was the ten year anniversary. I've okay, yeah. Since. So this most recent one has had um, real positive feedback. The one before that, eh. but who was, who was on the one before that? Maybe no guest. Ah, I think there was no guest. Do you critique those forms every week? The ones, because you, so what they do in their in their podcasts, and I'm actually really interested in doing this, is they have a web form that the people that watch it can fill out and say what they thought of each of the guests. It's a balance. So oh, it, it it gets to me. It gets to me summarized. I don't spend a lot of time on the PKA subreddit because it's bad for me, right? The the haters can bring me down. The lovers can give me this weird sense of you mean Reddit uh, Reddit's reality. toxic. Dude, it it like Joe Rogan, I say this all the time, does not belong on the Joe Rogan subreddit, right? If they love him too much, he starts to lose touch. He's a weird person, etc. If they just dog on everything he says and does and treat him like some sort of idiotic meathead, then that's not good for him either. Too much feedback on my show directly to me is not good for me. It's a mental health that. thing to some yeah. extent. I, yeah. I and feel you guys, that, brother. The I whole feel Twitch that. genre is interesting to me. Like in in some aspects, you're kind of selling your mental health for dollars, right? And you just go on here and you subject yourself to the feedback of the chat nonstop, nonstop. And if it's all positive and they all love you, that can fuck you up. Not quite as bad as the all negative and all hate you. Like that messes with you too. It's... um. It's, See, I reverse it. I fuck them up. So what I do is I just bully the shit out of them all day. And then <laughs> I'm joking. I, I, I legitimately actually treat my stream as a bit of a therapy session for myself. So if I've got something going on, okay. I just I just let it all out. I verbalize it into my into my stream one way and another. And and I try and have it go both ways. So I get a lot of people that actually message me saying, like, you know, I go through a lot of tough times and it's good just to be able to like relate in certain ways or just to, you know, be in a place where people can just be 
comforting towards they don't know, loss. Who, does anybody complain that you're whining? No, that's just you, mate. It's hard to accomplish what Pastilli's accomplished with his stream, right? If you don't have good vibes in Pastilli's stream, you don't fit in. You're the weirdo. We're all here to have a good time. You're the bad guy. And right? if you're not, fuck off. That's legitimately how I feel. I don't, <laughs> right? I'm pretty and, and brutal sometimes. And, and it, 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 there's like a societal pressure to don't be a dick in Pastilli stream. Veritas doesn't have that same thing going on. He battles with them back and forth and it, it doesn't squash it as, as much as he probably would like it to. It turns that into the culture, right? Anton lets it all roll off him but it still exists, right? How many times has Anton been a shitter? How many times has Anton... Well, he can't know, read what? chat, so that's... You know. <laughs> <laughs> not not looted as quickly as he could have, or who knows what you know they're fussing about. And uh, Anton laughs along with it, but doesn't squash it, right? I think we all... Well, I would love to have Pastilli's chat, but it's hard to pull off. I, I, I've, I've kind of tried to set the standard since I had like five viewers, and it's stuck. But it, you are correct. There, there are times that it does chip away at me. Um, I really don't like people commenting on appearance. I think it's a really disrespectful thing because, like, I honestly believe I have a resting tired face. Like, I just look tired all the time, mostly because I probably am in some way. Like, fatigue does actually exist with me nearly permanently. But it's, it's just a thing that I just always look tired. But... I'm still 100% there. I'm not about to fall asleep and, and, and pass out. But the, the amount of comments on it, is just it just baffles me. And then I feel like, I wonder what it's like in other people's streams. Because I don't actually go hang out in other people's streams that often. If I do, it's actually very chill streams. There's a chick that does um, guitar and singing called Saya Noe. I hang out in her chat a lot. Um, this chick named Kiki, she does uh, Sunday Confessions. And it's super chill vibes. And it's just fun. Or I hang out in other team members' streams. But generally, that's when I'm just like, you know, just saying good day most of the time. But I really I get, can't. I get, the same, I get the same for, like, I that I look like I'm mad. Or that, like, I... And maybe, I think, I honestly think that the beard and the mustache don't help. But most of the time, if I'm, like, passionate about... Even with you guys, like, I'm never mad at you guys. But I'll be like, what the fuck are you about? But when people come in, you know, they see that as, like, I'm just mad and angry and salty and... Uh, so yeah, so, so I, everybody's got like they're different. I love my story on this, right? At 36, right? 11 years ago when I started, I got a lot of like positive feedback on the way I looked. And every year I've gotten fatter and uglier as people do. <laughs> so sometime around 40, they're like, bro, what happened to Woody? Now I'm 47. And all I get is not bad for his age, actually. They've lowered <laughs> expectations. Until <laughs> <laughs> I circle around and I get good vibes. Oh my God. It's how I roll. <laughs> no. Nice. Yeah. Just I think it's a, it's easier when you're a bit older, though. Like, as in, if I was Anton, Anton yeah. handles his chat really well with just keeping it chill. Like, I think Anton's chat's probably one of the chillest chats to be in because it's always just fun humor, lots of laughter, and all that. Whereas, like, we're a bit older, so it, it's not as simple to hold that vibe. That's just how I feel. I feel like that's one of Anton's skill sets. It, Anton's the one who never lets it get to him. Anton's the one who reads someone say that whatever he looted to. Well, well, I don't have a face cam. So Go like on. sometimes, I mean, he freaks I don't have a off. face cam. So you like, I, I, Are you I mean, I definitely, off and we don't know. I definitely have looked at chat like what the fuck is happening and no one would know. I mean, I don't even try to hide it. It's just I don't have a camera, so you wouldn't know what I. I mean, I I appreciate the compliment. Thank you. But I still... think part of it's I think part of it is no camera though, because I definitely get mad sometimes. Do there are times get... where yeah, I've I've turned off the camera before, and, and uh, unfortunately, then it goes to the camera's off. Is he mad? But um, <laughs> sometimes I'm just like trying to be immersive and cinematic or whatever. But there, but honestly, like it's it is totally different when you don't have the camera because you can die and be like. And nobody sees the frustration and the, you know what I mean? Everything that everybody in chat does when you fucking die 27 times in a row to cheaters or lag or desync and the frustration you feel. Imagine if there's a camera on you and 10,000 people all watching, <laughs> spamming whatever. Uh, yeah, that's. There's a clip of me getting outplayed and throwing a temper tantrum about it like <laughs> a child. <laughs> and then I, I watched other people do that on their streams. And it's like, you know, I don't, I don't actually like that. 
Like the way that I behave when things go wrong wasn't the person I aspire to be. So I've cleaned it up as much as yeah, a whole bunch. I'm still not. Prepared. I learned yeah. this from Deadly Slob, actually. If I feel like it's a stream sniper or a cheater or whatever, you just go, yep, whatever. It is what it is. So, and then you just go next, 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 and just start getting into another raid or set up for another raid. And then, like, if you really need to vent, load into the next raid, just, guys, I've got to go to a pierce or whatever. I've got to refill my water bottle. And then you just get out the room and you're just like, oh, you motherfucker. <laughs> 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 throw a pillow or some shit like and, uh, one of these and, days i need to like oh. turn my camera and have there just be a wall and all there are just holes in the wall <laughs> <laughs> like, this is how i manage yeah and not giving attention to the people who are trying to get your goat it to me it feels like like they're getting the best of me but in actuality, you're getting the best of them. You're denying them the attention that they want. Uh, the non-response is a more powerful response than telling them off. And it, How it, do you it, tell the difference, though? Because I, I genuinely have a hard time telling the difference between somebody who is, like, trolling and trying to be annoying and get under your skin versus somebody who is either new or under a misapprehension or confused or maybe they're right and I don't know it, right? But, like... I, I give those you. people attention that I feel like are genuinely we disagree on something and those like debates and discussions are interesting to me and sometimes I learn something sometimes they learn something sometimes they're a troll and I just wasted my time but then when other people say why are you paying attention to the troll you're just letting them win well imagine if I banned them and ignored them and they were just an, an actual real concerned person you know I hear you man it's hard to get it all right you were mean to me once in your stream I was holy yeah. shit I asked, oh, tell me about oh, it. The oh, so I asked a oh, question amongst my little friend group. We're not sure if armor with arms is better or not, right? There mm -hmm. are some people who feel like, hey, shoot the arms. I don't care. You know, that doesn't hurt me. I'd rather have dead arms than worn out armor. And there are other people who feel like, no, protect the arms. Armor is good. I'd rather have more than less. And I asked you, and your response was something like, armor with arms? <laughs> What the fuck are you talking about? I don't know. And then you didn't answer. And I was like, oh, man. I really what, what's, your, what's your what's your Twitch I name? Because I now I need to know. I'm, what is I'm Gamertag? What is Gamertag? Woody, donate <laughs> next time, bud. Hey, I'm a, <laughs> Maybe I'm that's a, I might have. I'm a mod on Veritas' <laughs> channel now. Like, I can bring this up on screen. <laughs> I'm not a mod in my channel. You modded oh, me not, the other day. I didn't. Oh. You didn't? Fuck off, it, no. This would have been weeks ago, but oh, maybe even a month and a half ago. But uh, yeah, now, no, now like Veritas, to... you're the guy I think of who's like does the analysis on Tarkov, right? You know, there are lots of people who have game knowledge, but only one applies or approaches it so analytically. And I was like, I want to hear what Veritas says about armor with arms versus just taking bullets to the arms. And uh, that's how it went down. Shut you down. Fuck that mic guy. Do you want my opinion read, on I it? I want to read this. Do you want you my, I, want, I want to find I want to find what the question is and see if if maybe I misunderstood. Yeah, maybe it was phrased poorly, but that's uh I was like, oh okay. Veritas didn't like my question. <laughs> well, so I mean that's the thing is that I maybe I maybe I saw you as just like and I misread it and oh, saw yeah. you as somebody fucking with me. You're busy too, right? I was at, you were playing a game while you tried to answer this question. So so maybe you weren't able to yeah. I don't know. You, like, Sometimes I don't like answer people because I know I won't give them time. Like, I'll just be like, I can't answer. He could Where? have been molding or very salty in that scenario as well. So well, that's mean, a very real possibility. People have been calling me toxic lately because I've been reading toxic messages and then being toxic back to them. I don't think that's being toxic. But then it like you makes your whole stream strategy, toxic. Like, yeah. What's the like? If you if you just read toxic, then it's all toxic. <laughs> Yeah, that's it's, goes. it's kind of fun to be toxic though in a way sometimes. But you that's don't want toxic. that. Eventually, this equation of selling your mental mental health for Twitch donations, if you pay too much attention to the toxic stuff and make that what your chat's about, to be a bad deal. Right? It is. It's much it's much better to have smile a, only. Yeah, it, it's much better to have a chat that's on your side. And but if you don't it. get if you don't talk shit to those people and get rid of them, then people might think it's okay to. So, but I feel like you can dismiss them without. No, you burn them really fucking them. hard once in a while. Like, you don't no. do it all the time, but you burn them fucking hard that you, everyone else knows <laughs> it's not acceptable. So, 
Slush taught me so much early days. Yeah, but the thing I learned a lot from other people. It depends on your perception. Because yeah. if you're someone See, this like guy Slush can't do who, it. This who can can't shit do on it. somebody and it'd be a joke and everybody laughs. But but if that gets taken as, wow, this guy's toxic. Like imagine if you just put Slush in front of a completely new crowd and all of a sudden he started calling his viewers the C word and stuff. Like, And he the maybe C he didn't did, have an Australian accent. Did you just not say it? I mean, okay, sorry. I'm not, listen, listen, I'm not streaming sorry, on my sorry. channel. I'm streaming sorry, on Pestle's sorry. channel, so... I'm I'm not sure what what to say no, there. But okay, so the way the way Slush taught me about it, because I was always worried about getting banned over ripping into someone too hard, is right. you rip into someone's like family member <laughs> because that's not directed that person; it's at someone yeah. else that's not even there. So, <laughs> mum jokes work really well. <laughs> so if they say something, you can just rip a mum joke out on. Then it's it works it works and it, and chat loves it because it's a mum joke because chat likes mum jokes and it, it, that person feels like a fucking idiot and it works really well I use it all the time whenever I get really pissed off at someone that and you hear a mum joke you know oh you you yeah. know like you're looking somewhat bald today Pestle or some shit I don't know some fucking stupid thing like that and I was like you, you, your mum wasn't complaining when I fucked her in the ass last night or something like that and then whoa. they're just like whoa and because I don't say that shit very often but when I do I fucking hit it hard and then like <laughs> jesus and then that's how it is but i'm, I'm a gamer i, I don't I have found, sex so it's comment. not gonna happen it was a comment though it wasn't a question mine was you answered it <laughs> it wasn't a question though you said i wish wearing a helmet protected your entire head that's short sleeve armor protects your entire arm i wish your face wasn't so exposed all the time as it is now a 250k helmet has limited value okay i, so I was probably like short sleeve armor lot, what's that but that is not it because you answered, and, and I, I, I did hey, it. I just Veritas. went through 89 of your messages. You have 89 messages. I went through them all, and that's the only one. Darn it. Damn well, it. Maybe I remember it wrong. Maybe it was someone else. Maybe it was Pestily you asked. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, did you ask Pestily? Because he's mean, no, dude. He just, he's rude to his viewers. <laughs> yeah, um, so I'm you came on here to sabotage Veritas' career, and you just got shut down. <laughs> yes, I did. I, I, you know I, what? I, and guess what? It makes me look like a... A nice molding, uh, what else is there? I'm really sorry. That wasn't my goal. <laughs> but um, but yeah, if, if I get someone who's toxic, we should probably shift off this. That's if fine. I handle it perfectly, my target is make that guy not fit in. You know, bro, we're not here to like say harsh things about my kids. What are you doing? And ban him and send him off. And then everyone else tends to dog on that guy. And that's not the culture. That's That's what I, that's what perfect looks like on my stream. Do you ever get a message from somebody that you banned that you thought was trolling that was like, hey, dude, oh, like, what the, what the hell? Like, I I really liked you, and I looked up to you. I have and... Corona, and uh, your stream's been helping me, and you banned me, dude. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, yeah, I don't read Chat really wants me to know, really wants me to explain if I think you should wear arm protection or, oh. like, slicks. They keep asking me for the for the response. I generally like to wear the Gen 4 Assault with the arm protection because I find that a lot of people will um, full order you anyway. And if the arms don't reduce the damage, then the arms get blacked out and you're still taking mass damage anyway. So at least it gives you that little bit of extra time to avoid dying over that. Because if someone hits you from the side with a Keter, like seven bullets in the arms or five bullets in the arms, you're you're gone. Like you will be on like five five to fifty health kind of thing. Yeah, with slick you get stomached. I got like two tapped. I don't know. For me on no, factory, like I have to wear arm protection on factory. Like if I have Alton, I want arm protection. It just helps so much. You don't waste time in the bathroom healing blacked arms. You're just you can... I think so this is where I maybe differ with you guys because the the overflow damage, especially from arms, is largely insignificant um it's it's not huge especially because i think arm multiplier is 0.7 and it gets distributed throughout all of your other limbs that aren't black so if you have like a black leg and a black arm you're actually taking less damage if you get shot in your arm um, than if you were to get shot in your stomach or whatever but the, the thing you have to keep in mind is that if you get shot in the arm and without armor and your arm gets blacked out um, you can heal your arm back to full and you really, even if you have a CMS, you haven't made it so that you are easier to kill 
after that point if your armor hasn't been touched because those couple points of damage you lose in your arm by using a CMS, it, it, it won't change the number of bullets to kill you. But if you had arm protection, your armor would go from 50 out of 50 to 39 out of 50. So now you'll get one tapped in the chest by a lot more True. bullets. I, I, True. I want the chest protection over anything because all that matters is your chest and your head. At the end of the day, that's what you want to protect because that's what will kill you over everything else. I never thought of that, bro. God damn it. I still so, don't. I don't know, though. Hmm. It's Can the I same just, with people using a good, high pain ammo. If sorry. they use high pain ammo, it has lower damage. It hits your arms. It doesn't hit your armor. They do less damage. It takes more rounds to get through to you. I, I suppose so. I got a good example, actually. The other day, I got shot with a Mosin in the arm, and it would have fucked my armor. Well, they should And then the separate. second shot hit me in the chest, and then I died. Because the armor was damaged yeah. enough to easily kill me. Whereas a Gen 4 Assault be would normally take two clean hits to the chest with the Mosin to kill me if it was just chest armor. Whereas he actually missed the chest on the first shot and then got me on the second and it killed me. So I, I can see the valid points in it. It's there's there And there's multiple pieces to it because I'm going to go against what I said in that imagine if that Mosin shot would have hit your arm and your chest well, you actually reduce the amount that it hit your chest where you might potentially, depending on the ammo, have been one-shotted. Um, so again, there's all you have to know about ammo and the med uh, health system and ballistics is that it's really fucking complicated. So there's not just like one easy way of saying, this is better than this or this is better than this. You That's the beauty of talk of though. You have to know all of the ways in which all these interactions happen. And the only way that I could under... like. The only way that I was able to understand all this stuff is literally by modeling it in the app and testing it that way because... Battle Buddy app, available on Android so, and iPhones worldwide. Download Android now. Just got an, Android just got an update, by the way, for the just first time in 150 years. Oh, sorry. Thank you. This is the conversation with the people I always dreamed of happening, right? And I won't weigh in. I'm the new guy, but... No, do it. No, what do you find it? your experiences to be better <sighs> I hate yeah, my fucking stomach getting blacked out. I, I honestly would rather die faster than have my stomach blacked out. Maybe <laughs> so now that you heal it with a CMS, it's it's completely insignificant. Then I have to take a CMS. So much of Tarkov is like, you know, what armor do I wear? Which gun do I use, etc. Well, tell me how I'll be shot first. Tell me whether the guy has flesh damage or pen. Tell me this or that, and I'll know what to wear. And that, that makes it really complicated. I thought Anton's point of on factory because I often don't have time to run a surge kit and stuff. It can be busy. I'd rather have arms where maybe on reserve or woods or something where you kill a guy and you have a minute, he could maybe right. just prefer chest protection. Like, I thought that was a neat point. Uh, Veritas, thank you for answering. Yeah, anyway, good stuff. Guys? Bro, really, arm protection should be separate. Like, think of your arm health. Your arm health is separate from your thorax. Like, arm armor should be separate from chest. That's where the game is going, right? I, there's a Yeah, term yeah, I think so, name. but... Yes. Almost Hopefully gonna be they more. don't forget about that. <laughs> Have it, they, remember they showed off like the Fallout armor? It was like sheet metal, arm protection, and leg armor. Where's yeah. that at? Oh, uh, that was so cool. Ghost, what do you use? I use a uh, kill armor. Mm. Stomach protection. Most formed, most formed armor. It's cheap. Repairs good. People undercut each other so, f and it's also the, it's not the heaviest. Defender is heaviest. Not the heaviest. Yeah, it is. I so. like trooper armor. Trooper armor is... I, I set it to 90% or better. I can usually get it right around 100 grand. And yeah. I feel like that's two-thirds the price of the next armor up at best. Maybe half. If, if you keep your... If you use the armor and you survive four or five raids, and you keep that armor when it's like... It's ruined. You can't... It's, go, it's below 50%. Then you buy the mats to trade it for a slick. And then you have tier six. Oh, you're adorable. You don't think I just give my armor away to whoever kills me? <laughs> That's where my armor goes, my friend. <laughs> I've, I've had the best luck with the level two rag band, the 6B3TM, the level four chest rig, because it it is level four. It only has, what, like 35 points of 40, 40 armor points. But that's usually enough to let me survive the fight against whoever I'm fighting. And then in that case, because most of the time I'm aiming, I'm trying to aim for the head at least. I can dump that, get it back in insurance, and then take their rig and their armor. 
So I've dropped one thing and gotten two from it, and I can get that one thing back in insurance. Yeah, I find that that, that has the best track record for me. And okay. it's only 48K, which is not bad. Oh my God. Is my computer going to do this freezing thing again? I don't see it on my side. It's working uh, fine from my perspective. Did chat have a freeze then? No, chat's fine from my perspective. I think, I think we're. I think nah, we're chat got the loading. I got a loading signal. Twitch may have bugged. No, remember how my computer overheated last time? I'm going to open the window. Yeah. Just froze for me. It overheated. What? It sounds like my piece. It's oh. just this podcast. It's too fucking hot for 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 it's good. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> on fire. It's woody. I don't know. That's why I well, restarted my computer just before this. Because remember last time, not last, last time or time before we had that issue. And I was like, I don't want that happening again. So. I'm <laughs> <slow>. <laughs> Very tough was- with the production quality. <laughs> Anyway, uh, uh, what he clicked out. He didn't <laughs> I click thought he right. was goofing. He has to be kidding, right? I don't know. He's yeah, fucking he's with me overlay though. Yeah. How else will they down there? Yeah. And he'll come back and have to move it again. There we go. See, yeah. fucking piece of shit. What are you anyway, pressing buttons? I blacked out. What happened? Don't do that again. <laughs> the overlay. And now I've got mosquitoes coming in. Oh, this is horrible. I hate mosquitoes so much. Where do you live, bro? Is this is what you I live like? right next what to the, the canals fuck? in in the Netherlands. Like, there's water right outside the my window. Come so, Bastille, you had a goal of moving to Australia. I'm sorry, from Australia and experiencing more of the world. How's it fitting your expectations? <laughs> I've got really comfortable in this house in the Netherlands. I could tell you that. <laughs> uh huh. It's That's been honestly, case. it's been pretty shit because honestly, um. I was really excited to um, see, like I, I started planning this in 2012. This trip, whole whole trip was planned. I started planning in 2012. I was going to see every country of Europe. I was going to climb the highest peak. At the moment, I'm looking at maybe doing it in three years time. If the world goes, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking three years might be long enough for the world to be a bit more settled and still have not gone into full chaos and killed each other with all the other crap going on. Might be over by then. It might be over by then. It's our second World War Three scare of 2020. Right. I mean, what um, so legitimately, um, that's probably the plan at the moment. Um, so we're seeing if we can get a few countries in, in by the end of the uh, year. But I had so many plans. I've got a spreadsheet with like people's recommendations for every single country, and some of them are absolutely amazing. Like people will like come to my uh, my dad's. Um, ice creamery in in germany and make and make ice cream there and you know someone was going to take me fishing off the coast of norway um on some island that's meant to be absolutely amazing and he's got like a massive fishing boat and i've had this list of like all these awesome people with who've like either volunteered their time or or places or businesses to you know show me around and i've got i spent thousands of dollars on camera gear and it's, it's all just sitting here which is I mean, you moved to a different country and then coronavirus fucked you over. That's like... Yeah, so... Yeah. But, I look, I've got to look at the blessings on the other side. I put it this year all towards the stream instead. And, you know, my stream's only gotten bigger and bigger and people seem to like it. So, can I speak German? I'm fluent in German, Russian, Indonesian, Dutch. I don't believe any of Gavian. this. Gavian. Yeah. This isn't true, right? Yeah. Selamat pagi, mas. Apakabar harini. It's Indonesian. What else do you want to know? No hablo, bud. No hablo. All right. In German, say, I'm going to take the bus downtown. Mm. <laughs> Get! He that smiled. He's lying. He's, he's so fat. Shut the fuck he's up, Veritas. Let me fucking <laughs> I have to think of the With word your hands in the downtown. Air, let me the You're going to hear the Google text-to-speech. <laughs> Guten Tag, Fraulein. Like, as he, like, <laughs> tries to... I'll do it in Dutch first, all right? <laughs> right, Whoa, and then German was that the grapefruit audio? <laughs> no, that was Dutch. That was fluent <laughs> chat. I can agree that was fluent Dutch. Uh, that was spot on. See, that was Dutch. how to grapefruit your man, and you know it. <laughs> I actually know a fair few Dutch words, and I know the I know very small amount of German. I don't know anything about Russian besides dicky needles and cheeky bricky and. <laughs> Cheeky, <laughs> <laughs> something about suka. Yeah, 
Who's Suga? And what, what? I love chicken noodle Suga. I don't know. It doesn't turn out and, as well as it sounds. And why don't they like blight it? Blight it. Oh, God. So yeah. this, this spanned all off the VSS talk. Thanks. Yep. <laughs> all right. Yep. All right. Another thing I want to talk about, the 155 pin cap. All right. It's getting pretty tight out there. Like Veritas and I can barely play with each other. And it's only across the water. You can even do it if you're friends with people. That's stupid. Like, I am living on the one side of the ocean and Veritas is on the other. And we're not that far apart. And um, we're sitting Veritas? on 110 ping. Without he, doxing yourself, Veritas. Boston. What time He's zone in are Boston. You in? East Coast. Eastern, near, the, near the Boston area. Okay. Uh, 72 yeah, have... degrees north. <laughs> yeah, I have a, an Irish friend, and we run into that sometimes too. He finds the Washington DC server works for him. Oh well, but, we know uh, where to get you on. <laughs> yeah, <don't> <laughs> doxing ourselves. Yeah, you but, can't um, touch that server anymore, bud. You got to uncheck that one from your list. Damn it! Yeah, I'm but, um, server. on one hand, I love it. I, I feel like there are no, let's just say, Chinese hackers. Right? They, like it's it's literally down to zero uh, here in America. So that's cool. It has actually impacted honest play though it's hard for me to play with my irish friend i have a friend in new zealand um can't play with him period yeah um bpm fix it or no so, it's no so i mean the majority of those people that anyway played on those servers they did it by means that anyway hide their pings so my wife some servers though there's a there's a way and i'm, I'm sure ghost will know <laughs> There's a way you can connect to a server. This is this is going to like be like a little bit weird, but there's a server say in let's say London, and you have that London server connect to the Tarkov server. So you actually connect to that London computer server, and then Tarkov thinks you're connected to that London server. And I'm not talking a VPN. This is slightly different. So yeah. you, Tarkov thinks your actual ping is like forty, but really you're playing from a proxy server. Yeah. So you're actually but playing. It's not but the ping has to hit the client, and the client is on your computer. So Maybe they find another way to do it. I don't understand exactly, but I'm fairly confident Unless that's how the they get around. Proxy is where the client is, right? Like if you have, if, you know, if I'm using just a screen share and your computer is running it, and your computer is closer to the place, right? Do you follow what I'm saying? I do. The client doesn't have to be on your own computer. If, no, so if you're playing with a client elsewhere, then then yeah. But if yeah. if the client is running on your machine and you just if I connect to a VPN, because I can choose with my VPN what country. With that setup, my ping is only going to get worse because I'm literally just increasing the amount of hops. Um, I follow just it's, it's it's proxy, proxy. It's it's yeah. proxy. It pings to the first proxy, which is the 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 proxy server and not your PC. So it prox it prox once, and then it hits the the proxy server. So it's it not a VPN. VPN. Yeah, it's not a VPN. Is it's it like, a VM uh, running on some box somewhere like that you install Tarkov on? I don't exactly know how it works, but it's... Yeah, or do they have some sort of packet inspection that's doing the response for you I, instead I, of the, it, intercepting I, it before it goes to the client? I'm just a guy that plays computer games, but I'm, I'm 99% sure this is how they do it. So even if they do make the pings one cats 150, it really just... It might stop a large portion... But it, it doesn't... Like, this is the thing that fucking annoys me, right? I'm actually afraid to go back to Australian servers because if all these people are literally just going to whatever servers they can under 150 ping, well then, you know, Slash is having a fun time back in Australia. You know, like, he's sitting on a server with the large majority of the, you know, the cheetah base just farming those servers. Very t so the chat said I was wildly wrong, but I think... They didn't hear what I was going for. I said there are no Chinese hackers on American servers. I've seen zero. Uh, seen... West Coast. Well, West I Coast mean, can connect to China. I can connect to China right now. Saying, so I mean, okay. okay. Saying Chinese is kind of. We could leave it out because honestly, it doesn't matter. There's yeah, the cheaters. Matter. You even if someone has a Chinese name, you don't know that they're Chinese. Even if, you know what I mean. So it's like there's just no point to even adding that on there. Um, because there's be cheaters everywhere, and it still feels like there are lots of cheaters, um, especially on labs. So whether they're from China or not, we couldn't know. So I guess it kind of doesn't 
matter. Yeah, for it's our a little head in the sand, though, to ignore the concentration, right? The, the prevalence of cheating in China. Like, it, that's just real, right? Yeah, yeah, I can agree with that. There is a large portion. But there's also people that have been found out to be cheating from America, too. For sure. Yeah. And that's where the chat said I was so wrong. They're like, dude, there's still hackers. Well, I agree with you, chat. There are still yeah. hackers. But I feel like I'm protected from one of the bigger hacker bases. I think that's it, valid. Well, I mean, that, that could, might be true. I just don't know how we would ever confirm that yeah. in any way. Because we didn't much, have the information like, before. I mean, you know, I'm sure Nikita probably has that info, but I don't. Yeah, you know, when you get one tap by a guy who sprinted through a doorway with an SA-58 in the face, and you know, and then he has a Chinese name, it's like, man, there sure are a lot of clues here, right? Like, although if I was going to cheat, the first thing I would do is change my name to some Chinese thing, whether or not I was from China, because now I just know it's a meme. But like, <laughs> okay, I don't know. What if I yeah, change yeah. my name? I reset my account and change my name to something that's Chinese. And then when I kill people, you know, they're it's like, a meme if you don't know English. I Sorry? don't think it's a there. I know like, Chinese. I mean, they... You think I don't know Chinese? I do think you don't know Chinese, Pistoli. Ni hao ma ting hao deni ne. Shi shi. Yeah, yeah. I studied Chinese in high school for four years. Chinese I'm not even bullshitting. Four... Well, you just bullshitted about four different languages. My, 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 my bullshit detector. My Indonesian was 100% spot on. 100 I'm fluent in Indonesian. On. I'm not even joking with that one too. I'm an no, 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 Indonesian translator. I don't know what to tell. Chat, am I an Indonesian Indonesia. translator when I was the in the one army? One thing I do know about him is that he speaks Indonesian. Hmm. Okay. Cool, right man. next to Australia. That's Everything like else is a lie. Spanish. <laughs> and Malay is very similar. Uh, but yeah, um, I think the ping, the ping thing, ping thing, that sounds really weird. Ping thing's kind of like... I don't know if it really makes that much of a difference overall, though, because it, it's like Band-Aid fixes after Band-Aid fixes. I, I, I like the fact that they're play, being very aggressive with the banning of like trying to get everyone they possibly can. And I, I think making it verbal that they are banning people is a good thing. But the only thing I find negative about it is it actually exposes how many cheaters there actually are. So like, hey, we banned 4,000 cheaters in the last 24 hours. And it's like, well, this shit. Is a yeah, but how many of them just buy another account? <laughs> like, it, yeah. that's what I love that they're talking about it. Uh, the last one they noticed, I mean, they mentioned how many real money traders they banned, P customers and uh, suppliers. And I was like, ooh, that's cool. Let's get, let's get people scared to do real money trading. Let, let's hurt that business model in, in general. I'm pretty happy with it. And the, the ping is just a band aid. I hear you. But isn't that the way that we're going to have to approach this? Is there, if there was a silver bullet, they'd have fired it. Instead, they have to use 97 different Band-Aids. And that's yeah. just the nature of Unfortunately, the, the Band-Aids don't really fix a lot of the problems, but they do make it tough for normal people to play with their friends across the world. Do so you it's think, like, and I actually, I am legitimate with this one, because it affects me more than you guys. Do you think that you should be able to play Tarkov with 200 to 250 ping? A friend, yes. Why? Because if, friend, if their servers were better and they could handle ping comp it's... lag compensation and all that stuff, then yeah, but I don't... Now, no. Because... Well, what if, well how do you play with someone across the world? I mean, okay. that's what makes awesome games cool. I See, now, in Australia, like, the issue I used to run into in Australian servers was there was no one to play against. So, like, I used to play during the middle of the day and I'd go into a customs map and I'd be finding one player a map. Like I would literally just be go dorms, go to the main areas, nothing, and then, and then I used to start playing on West Coast NA um, with 160 to 170 ping. It wasn't like I was like, you know, 300 ping teleporting everywhere. Like you can see the footage of me and Anton. There's a video called Anton v Pestoy 2-2, and it looks smooth. Like there's not teleporting around or anything, and um, and that's what but I ran you, into. But Anton. you also were in Australia before the game blew up as big i wonder if there's I, mean, I, I don't know i'm not saying either way but i'm sure there's more people in that region now more oh, players yes. so now it's the opposite now there's so many players on the australian servers no matter what time of the day you're playing you're all stuck on matching for 10 minutes yes yeah. five to 10 minutes for matching wait so, but why that is that indicative of a lot of players or not a lot of players too many too if many. there's no players you go in instant what happens to, what happens that doesn't when, make, wait, 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 explain that to me 
So there's so many, the only so many full. servers and they're full and you've got to wait until the servers are empty enough to fit you in. I get your so, point, Veritas. It seems like both problems could cause that, right? Oh, only only someone from America. If, it, it depends on if they have a limited number of servers versus they need a minimum number of players to get into a server. There's no minimum. Both of them will result in long queue there's times. There's no minimum? There's like, no I minimum. Could in theory, get in the woods and be the only I can player. guarantee yeah, you. Nikita said no. That's all I can say. I don't that, know. I've got footage. It's hard. I, I, well, I've had it happen too in nighttime factories. And shit. So... You used to be able to, and they just changed it very recently. You used to be able to top FPS space one, uh, two, sorry, FPS space two, and you used to have like packets in. And then if you saw that it was 0.0, .0 you could tell that the server was completely empty because there was no packets going back and forth between you. As soon as the scavs spawned in, you would tell that there were scavs in there. Um, and I would clear labs and I'd be like, I wonder if there's anything left to kill. And I would go FPS space two and it'd be 0 .0, 0.0. And I'm like, yep, everything's dead. No players, no raiders, time to leave. Right? And I would only use it as a reference if I should go and try and kill more to try and break the XP records. Not because I just didn't want to spend the next 15 minutes trying to look for something that wasn't there. Um, How much of that has to do with proximity to the players? Because somebody was con trying to convince me of those same rules and it got went down to zero and they said, see, now we have labs alone. And then 30 seconds later, a player ran by and it went up from zero to one. So I don't know that anybody if, fucking knows those those rules. It doesn't work to be, anymore. I'm they changed it now. You can't do it anymore. Yeah. But for such yeah, but a long like time, a month or two ago. for such so. a long time, I used to be able to go into a map and be like, all right, how many players have gone gone into the map? And it used to, this is before it said packets in, it was something else. It used to count up by twos. So if there was four players in the map, it'd be on eight. Right? That was like a year ago though, right? Yeah. So I used to go That's into cool. interchange yeah. before there was scavs, have FPS two up on the side and I could tell you how many players were left in the map as I was going around because there was no scads when Interchange first came out. How many players were in the map? On a related note, can you still tell if there's uh, raiders or boss on reserve with that method? No. So the way that um, they've That's changed gone. the they've changed the rate in which the boss spawns. It used to be forty five percent. Now it's twenty eight percent. And it used to be a hundred percent of the time you press the lever for um, the medic okay. door. Used to be 100 percent of the time. Now it's only 50 percent of the time. As well as that, at the 28 minute mark, it used to be that um, raiders used to spawn in. I think 100 percent of the time. Now it's 50 percent of the time. So they've actually reduced the amount of raiders and also how often the scout bosses on that map. This game is so complicated, guys. <laughs> it's yeah, you can you can thank the wiki for that info. <laughs> yeah, pretty much, like everything that we used and abused as in net ms and you know seeing people how many are in the raid and all that that all got changed like a year ago so the, the the thing is like it was really frustrating for me back in the day because i would go into a customs raid and there was an, a, a pre-wipe event and they made it that there was no scavs for the pre-wipe event so you'd literally go into a map and every single person that was in the map was just a player so i used to go into a customs raid have the net ms up there and I'm like, and no one's in this raid. So I just ran to the extract. You know, when, like, when was this? Uh, that would have been 2018. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. But so now, because going back to how this all started, you, people are saying that there are ways to get into a raid alone. There's and not I, anymore. There's too many and players. I, you could pick it, Turkey, okay. which is probably the least populated server. Maybe, maybe South Africa Yeah. would be low. Uh, but you would need someone to well she i don't know i've tried south africa and i've tried to do it for like five minutes of searching there will always be someone that just plays at five in the morning and then hits it but i've done it with a second account and it's it was only myself and my second account there was no gunfire no nothing for 50 minutes straight but that doesn't necessarily mean that the map was empty yeah i know but yeah he's on one side of the exit and the other guy's on the other the side point i want to make is the reason why you get stuck on matching is because the server's full and they don't have any spots for you to get on. So do you, do you have that info from Nikita or I can it's fucking just you can tell man. Like there's you don't need info from Nikita to be able to tell that hey, someone's sitting on matching for fifteen minutes and then they finally get in. But if I go to the, the server list and I take it off automatic and I put it on every server under 150 ping, I get into a server within five seconds of matching. Five to ten seconds, it goes matching and it goes you know Loading loot. But again, doesn't that work both ways? I know I know. chat says I'll get this as if... Uh, I think chat, maybe you'll get it eventually. Um, 
is is what you experience would it not be exactly the same if there was one player or one million players like isn't it you wait matching no so the way it works if you've got only if it's only you joining the server and there's no one else trying to join it goes to matching for about 10 15 seconds and then it just starts joining the server and it just goes on a waiting players for about a minute and a half and after waiting players for about a minute and a half it just launches the the raid and you get the the deploying timer and then you go into the raid empty with an empty server so waiting for players, what does that step indicate? Because I always assumed that. that I'm guessing step that's was, the time already, for more people we've to We've match already matched it. people. No, we've already matched people. We need the people to load in. We're waiting for everybody to load in that we've already selected. Um, but that's not again, the I, sequence Pastelli just outlined. He said that if you're the only player to join a server, you'll go to waiting to players. It'll give it additional time for other players to join. And even if they fill don't, the server. it begins. And so that's where, when you're on a waiting for players, if the server's not full, so say you're going to a labs raid and the server's not full and it starts launching deploying, you might have been on the waiting players or deploying and it's gone, hey, there's still a spot on this server, grab that person. And they chuck that person, but that person still needs to do loading loot and all the other crap. And then by the time they deploy, it's now a minute into the raid. And that's why we have late spawns. 100%. I'm, I'm, I would, I'd bet $1,000 on it. Late spawns are uncommon for me lately. I fucking hate them, man. It's labs. It's always labs. Oh, I don't play. As... I'm at a skill level where I think if there were no hackers, <laughs> I'd come out a little positive on labs. But with hackers just nuking me every now and then, I'm a net negative, and I can't play labs unless I have money to throw away. I have successfully 10 men on almost every single map on a server. I've taken 10 people. 10 people, 11 people, 12 people in. And I've taken them into dead servers. And we instantly match a minute in. And well, we that, find so that to me means that the there's time. not, that it's a player count thing and not a server limit thing. Because if there were no servers, well, let me let me think about this. If there were, if there was like only one server available, then I guess you'd both pretty much get into that one. If there were no players, then you would probably get into that one. Again, like, it seems like really hard to figure out. Pes, can you explain the the labs thing uh, again? The uh, why you why you think we load into labs late because so there's already been people that have gone into the server. They're gone. There's labs has a maximum of ten players. It gets to the point where it's like, all right, there's a server available, and so Pesto is going to start joining into that server. So it puts me on. I'm the first person to go into that server because the map's just fresh. They start it queuing fill up, up right away. Though, there's right? not enough people. There's not enough people, right? You said so there's they... not enough servers last time. No, this is that was talking about Australia. We're talking we're talking about a different thing right now. Okay. What do you, okay. So in Can one case, there's bit? not enough people for labs in EU. Is that what we're talking about now? I think that's worldwide at the moment because everyone's afraid of hackers. No one wants to go labs right now because if you do, you die into a cheater. It's not secret. One in three lab raids, you get fucked over. Chat, what stop whining. I'm not ranting. I'm trying to learn something, and because uh, I I think Pesley no. actually has information, and this is interesting. So you all, you Just guys, ignore chat. Just focus on I me. I see where Veritas is coming from. It, like the the symptoms could be interpreted from either side. Too many or not enough. And he's, I think, just really trying to put a. a I'm not even uh, saying he's an, wrong. An I'm trying, I'm asking... Right, right. But you're looking for a definitive answer, like like one where we know 100 percent sure whether it's one or the other. Because no, the no, symptoms I wanna, I are just the similar the on both sides. Yeah, I okay. just want to know the logic. This is interesting to me. I'm, I'm literally not saying you're wrong, Pest. I'm, I'm saying like... I don't know how they code it, but I think they've got it the way. The way they've got it is first person goes, all right, we've, uh, we're going to join a server. Person starts joining the server. Now that's got a timer. That timer kicks in. Let's call it one minute. All right. So now it's got a minute to fill up the rest of the spots on that server. Remember how like you used to play PUBG and you used to go... You just spawn at the plane and then the plane would start, like all the players would start meeting at the plane. Then they'd be like, oh, we're 85 players. Now we'll start the 60 second counter. Tarkov does it differently. As soon as the first person hits, 60 second counter ticks in, right? And so then- Yeah, I'm with you on, I'm with you on yep. labs. Um, and then people- spawn. Yeah, okay. So what else do you want me to explain? Well, I thought we were, we were on the topic of there being not enough servers. So that's what the problem in Australia right now. So and Australia can the lab in the problem flip. That's okay, why. So Australia at the moment has, it's got, it's okay. So Nikita did another thing that a lot of people don't know about, which it's, I, I don't know definitively from him, but it's obvious to me is there is more than one server in Australia. 
it just says Sydney. So he's grouped them together, right? It used to be like you could pick Sydney one, two, three, Miami one, two, three, all those, right? But now there's probably like 15 servers in Sydney, but it's all grouped as one. So it's so people can't specifically go, I don't want to be on these specific ones. Because what I used to do, if I wanted to do a money run, I'd pick Sydney three because people set to auto would automatically get put on Sydney one and then Sydney two. So then I would have the low pop server to go on Sydney three and I could just do a money run, no dramas. And I'd run into no one. And I explained this to people because it's fucking, to me, it's common sense. Um, anyway, so uh, with the the service, so Australia p- players right now can only pick Australia. You used to be able to pick Singapore and Hong Kong. For some reason, now their pings are too high. Like they used to be under 150. Now they're like 180 and 200. So now Australians can only pick the Australian server. But there's also people in Asia that can get to the Australian server for whatever reason. Um, and now Australian players are not only hit, stuck with high matching times, but they're also stuck with the influx of people cheating from that region. So yeah. I, that's my biggest fear about going home is actually going back and then having a stream where I spend 80% of my stream matching. If you go check the Twitter post on the ping limits, you can see that the, the majority of South American people, South African and Australian people are complaining a, a, a whole bunch because of this changes. They are now it's forcing those people to only be on those servers and they are trying to lock those people out, but it's not working with the methods they are using. They are literally staying on those servers undetected for the longest of time. So what is their complaint about playing on Australia servers? That they're Ma- not high matching time. First one is high matching time. And the second one is um, getting shocked by cheaters doing more servers so well nikita said they were adding more so i don't know where it's yeah. at now i haven't spoken to many australian players at the moment because i streamed during their bedtime so i if slush was here if he woke up we'd be able to find out what his thoughts would be but my plan when i get home is to actually stream from about three or four in the morning onwards so see how that goes when are you going home mm, sometime between october and january you staying home? Well, the fucked up <laughs> thing is Australia, when you get back to Australia, you have to spend two weeks in a, in a hotel. So we've done some research. Um, to my understanding, we can o- organize with the hotel to have stuff delivered there before we get there. So we're actually going to have my full stream set up from Australia, sh- shipped to the hotel, and I'll have a full stream set up. And we found a hotel that, that's approved by the government that has um, a really good internet connection. <laughs> So as long as that goes well, I'll stream from a hotel for two weeks. If not, I'll be just doing IRL streams from the phone whilst I'm laying on the bed. So and, you're uh, visiting home. You're not moving home. No, I'll move back home. Yeah. To a hotel. <laughs> for two weeks. Yeah. And then to a home. Don't know. We, we haven't decided what we're doing yet. Maybe rent, okay. maybe buy. Maybe buy yeah. a boat and I'll just stream from the boat. <laughs> I, th- yeah. I thought you said on your stream, well, I know you said I was there, that you're going to America. No. You totally said it. I was there. You said you were going to come to I America. I say a lot of stupid shit on my stream, mate. You got to be very, very specific. <sighs> when did I say this? How long ago? Uh, less than 10 days ago. Okay. And, yep. I said uh, if TwitchCon goes ahead, I'll be going to TwitchCon if they let me. Maybe I misinterpreted it. I don't know. I got the impression that America no, I, is the I, next stop on the I specifically World said I would of, never of, want to go to America to live. I've specifically <gasps> said that. What's wrong, travel? Why? 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 Me, did, during that stream, did you also say anything about arm armor? I'm trying to put the pieces <laughs> together here. Maybe at <laughs> one just bender day. <laughs> That's what it is. No, legitimately, um, I, I, I just... I would love to travel across America and, and, and visit all the states and, and climb mountains and drive on what's the white road across America that everyone likes to do? Route 56 or something? 66. 66. Yes, route, <laughs> route 56, everybody. Get your, Stop on get by. your kicks on Route 56, everyone. What, what is Route 56? Raleigh, I'll take you for a tandem paramotor ride. No, but legit, legit I'd, I'd love to spend like a good few months traveling across the country, but... Um, I want to see pests fly in a wind tunnel. We currently oh. have riots, so maybe not. I know. just, yeah, it sounds Pest really. Joey doesn't want to come to America because he lacks the durability to deal with our police force. Yep. I just do. I would not want to live there long term. 
I think it would be very, it'd be <laughs> very stressful for me. Like taxes would confuse me. Oh, yeah. Like, yep. I, I like my Australian business model. <laughs> like, what do you mean? Our tax system is super simple. Your healthcare yeah, yeah. system's fucked. I'm sorry, but your healthcare system is fucked. Especially as a content creator, dude, it's not. It's really easy to do my. Yeah, and our healthcare system is fine if you're not sick. <laughs> <laughs> what if you fall down the stairs, mate? What if you fall it's down the stairs? Really, yeah, How really much would that cost me? How much? It cost me nothing here, by the way. How much would that cost me to fall down the stairs, guys? If you didn't have fall insurance, four hundred and fifty thousand dollars per weekend that you spend. In the- <laughs> I was gonna try to actually guess. I would say a visit to the ER where they just sort of check you out and give you some advice. Uh, I got a, I got a scan, a scan on my uh, neck as well. I mean, it would probably be fifteen hundred bucks for the ambulance ride, something like that. Um, That's just the ambulance ride. That varies widely by location. It could be closer to ten. It can be a couple hundred. Who's raking in all this money? I guarantee you. And Those ambulance event. drivers aren't getting paid like a thousand dollars to pick up. Like, it's insurance, bro. Everything has dude. to do with insurance and lawyers. Don't get me fucking started. I don't want to get. I don't want to know. See, like nope. this, just see this is not attractive. This is not attractive. I come to the Netherlands. I get a place really nice in a nice city with a, a five hundred down connection, internet connection. Cost me fuck all, and everyone speaks English as well. And I'm can visit all Europe when there's no COVID. <laughs> and and it, it it just all works. And on the bright side, at least the education is cheap in the United States. I don't need to be educated. I'm I'm a hundred percent on education skill. <laughs> well, both of <laughs> level fifty one. What I said and what you said are false. But <laughs> what? Yeah. How is it actually expensive? Education here? Yeah. Uh. You know how much me and my wife owe in student loans. Yeah. I do actually, but I don't know how long yeah. you went to school for. College can well, be seven, seven years each. So much, man. Say seven each. Seven, yeah. Fuck me. What did you do? She got her PhD in pharmacy, and I got my master's degree. A master's oh. in seven? Why not six? Huh? Because yeah. my undergrad was in business and economics, and I Oof. my master's was in CS. So I did um three months I of about the same university. Background. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's possible I fucked your mom. Oh! oh. <laughs> That's the payback for before for fucking him off with his with the question. I'm his sorry, mom watches every we, podcast. I, just I so concede. You know. He's swinging. He's I, I concede. <laughs> <laughs> I feel bad. I went this too hard. This man is dead. Chat. <laughs> <laughs> uh, huh. Um, where were we going with all this? I don't know. So I yeah, not gonna to move to America. There's where we were going. <laughs> no, I actually have pretty big plans for um next year. I'm gonna buy a really nice fishing boat and start fishing streams. 100. percent This is no bullshit. So. I'll still be playing Tarkov in games, but I'll also be once a week, uh, once or twice a week going out on the boat. So. Just remember DC servers. Ooh, good point, chat. Thank you. Chat coming in strong. <laughs> They're going to get me. Uh, What's your in-game name, by the way? Woody's Gaming Tag like? TV. You shouldn't have told me that. They're going to get wrecked. <laughs> <laughs> if I meet Veritas in game, that's where my armor goes. I want to be able to hire scavs to like, hit players tag let me tag and curse i will pay to have them tagged and cursed oh my god just trying to be funny man (laughs) stop (laughs) taking all my rubles (laughs) Uh, i'm taking your gear nah young bloods is too attractive for me by the way chance is talking about the next number young bloods but um young bloods is a youtuber it's an australian Uh, guy named brody and he's always got like his girlfriend was a uh, playboy playboy model and um she was like the, the thumbnail of every single video. <laughs> <laughs> She'd be in the video for like 15 seconds in a bikini and then the rest of the video is him fishing. But the, the fishing part was the most enjoyable part, believe it or not. So, How do you make a fishing stream interesting, Bastilli? I'm curious. It's all about the chill vibes, dude. I, I, I actually like started fishing. Be... Oh, I'm sorry. I started streaming with fishing. It's it going to be chat interaction, right? This yep. is, is going to be like a... 
a nonstop chat interaction. So when I scare the fish away, I'm not a fisher. Paddle you know, labs. The way I'm going to have it set up um, is I'm going to have a fairly nice boat now that I can afford one. It was going to be a lot cheaper originally, and I'm going to have cameras everywhere and an underwater camera as well. I want to try and play around with that idea, and I'm going to have someone most likely in control of the cameras. And so the person that will drive the boat for me will also maintain the cameras and I'll just walk around the boat talking with a microphone attached and just like, I don't know how, I've seen some pretty cool ideas where you can get tablets on your wrist and stuff um, and I'll have like a tablet on my wrist with chat and I'll just talk to chat from the wrist and just fish and talk and look at cameras and it's going to be fun. It's you, just, uh, okay. I don't want to see it. Sorry, Anton? Get Anton? Oh, sorry. My, yeah, people were saying my mic sucks. I have to get close. What were you catching out there? Uh, squid, King George whiting, um, and garfish was what I was originally doing. But when I get back to Australia, I'm going to be targeting big fish. My actual nephew is an amazing fisherman, and he's caught some big fish. So, Wait, uh, are you deep sea fishing? Uh, that was like within, say, one nautical mile of the of the uh, coast. But my nephew's going to take me out. Uh, there's Tell actually more about your boat. What boat are you getting? I don't know yet. I've 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 got a fairly sizable budget at the moment. So. Uh huh. So tell me, like, this is it's like the number of that engine. bar at the top of your stream. That bar, that's your budget, right? Uh, no. So that's <laughs> yeah. my retirement fund. Oh, that's, yeah. that's that's Good that's fun. when I quit streaming. When we hit the million on that one, that's when I retire. Um, but the but the uh, yeah part of that will actually go towards the boat. He's going to name his boat the kids and this for the kids <laughs> bullshit all along <laughs> has been a scam. <laughs> come, on, come on my boat for the kids. Oh, yeah, yeah. The <laughs> and then all this for the kids boat, but it's been a whole thing. You just exposed the, the scam. <laughs> it's not yeah. a scam if you're not lying. He just never said which kids. Right? Yeah. Bunch of kids yeah. in Lamborghinis getting rich. It's gonna be um, it's gonna be really cool. And then anyone who wants to visit and join on a stream, be more than welcome. So how long will the boat be, roughly? I, I honestly, dude, I haven't. So the original plan was, uh, we used to, we used to have all these boats bookmarked that were around twenty foot, um, and they were, you know like around there, and they were around you know twenty five grand. But I think I'm gonna extend the budget to about double that now that I can afford it. Should be cool. It will be. be cool. It needs an enclosed cabin so I can have the computer set up all in there as well with like yeah. all the electronics. I'm going to get it all professionally done. That sounds cool. Yeah, man. I'm really excited. I think I think the thing you got to remember, dude, is, um, and, and this is a really good tip for anyone who's actually wanting to stream on Twitch, is you've got to think about what kind of viewers you want to have on your channel. And what people would like to be able to see that they wish they could do, but they can't. So for example, Tarkov is a great example with, I wish I could be good at Tarkov, but I can't. So I'll watch someone who can be. And it's like, there's a lot of people that'll be like stuck in an office doing their data entry job. And on their other monitor, they'll watch a Tarkov stream. There's the same people out there that would love to go fishing, but they live in a city that's nowhere near the water. And they could be like, well, I could just go watch this dude who's fishing. And it's like, I'm part of the journey anyway. So I think you don't have to use fishing example. You could use anything really. I wish I could go. I don't know if you could can think you of a kill cool a idea. Fish on fish? Uh, I've definitely done that on stream already. But you can't kill a deer. <laughs> like you can't like show a deer dying or something. Uh, God well, damn it! Can uh, it depends on how it works. So you wouldn't be able to shoot a deer. So you, you can kill a fish. Well, the way I kill a fish is like just catch it and then chuck it in an ice bucket. It's not like Capital I'm like D stabbing D it with a knife. If I was like, <laughs> I think it might be a bit different. Wait, don't you have to get more aggressive with the big ones and bat it or something? Uh, you have to Fuck. kill them, break your leg. Well, well real big. How big we got? 100, 100 pounds. Pound it's like 600 pound tuna. <laughs> <laughs> Can't you? Never mind. Go on. Go on, say it. Get me banned on Twitch. Even like a thirty-pound fish could fuck you up, fish. I just I I've watched um I don't know what it's called like swamp people or whatever those dudes that that <laughs> turtle hunt man the, the <laughs> alligators and it's pretty much like a twenty-two rifle and and like a fucking some meat on a rope. Well, we've explained it to, to Twitch it with already. A bat. So if Twitch 
have given me the okay so far. I don't think there's going to be any issues. There might be some like fine print I might need to like balance around with the uh, the handling of the fish. But honestly, like I'm planning to cook and cook and like fill it and cook them on stream as well. So have a barbecue set up um, where I can cook it all up. If your stream gets too extreme for Twitch, I'll follow you to Chatterbait. Righto. <laughs> Oh, I'd just go to YouTube, wouldn't I? That's where you guys fucking hang out and <laughs> say all sorts of fucked up shit. <laughs> so, like, the thing is, man, like, I was on your podcast and and there was some conversations that generally, like, I would talk in, but I was like, I wonder what the repercussion is if I said too much here. Like, it's... You, you guys definitely sit on that line that, would not be a Twitch friendly podcast. On PKA? Yeah. Yeah. So Twitch keeps raising its standards in terms of wholesomeness. Like there's hundreds of episodes of PKA on Twitch. We used to live stream it all the time. And I think if we tried that now, we'd be pushing the limits or get banned. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. There was one thing about spraying acid on the walls and something. I can't remember the exact wording of it, but I couldn't comment acid? on that. Sp spraying, spraying acid, acid. On... yeah it was about um involving a person and yeah on walls though like construction walls like in a building Dexter shit what are you go talking? watch the episode it's about two-thirds of the way through i had to just <laughs> shut my mouth and just smile and mm -hmm. yeah we get some uh you might know tucker i jericho he comes on the show and he's a twitch streamer and every so often he just buttons up and lets us carry on without participating yeah yeah Our my podcast is Oh, what the worst is this? People now, now my audience is older now, right? They'll be like 24. And they're like, oh, man, I've been watching so PKA older. for 10 years now. Boomers. And I'm like, dude, your parents should have not allowed that. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Um, I think we might get. Oh, and? No, no. Oh. But I think I think we might wrap this one up here. But before we do, would you talk a little bit about your podcast and I'll give you opportunity to. Because there'd be some faces here that would definitely be interested in hearing more from you. Um, you don't just oh. talk about Tarkov. You barely talk about Tarkov on there. No, but. yeah. So so I'm not a – my, my, I do a podcast, Painkill, already. It's been going for 11 years now. And uh, it's on my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Woody's Gamertag. Comes out every week, Saturday morning. And uh, we cover – it's a hum it's a comedy podcast. And we usually take current events, riff on them, et cetera. Uh, it's very fun. It's not for a polite crowd. You know, every time some hot 24-year-old teacher has sex with a high school student, we uh, we evaluate how hot she is. Like, that's the nature of the show. So, um... <laughs> my mods are... <laughs> Sorry, my mods are just banning Kerms, and I'm like, hmm. Fair <laughs> <enough>. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, guys, go check it out. It's on, on YouTube, uh, Woody's Gamertag. Um, it's PKA. Um, I, th I think my, my mods don't like the word RSK. It's real sweet kids mods, all right? Real sweet kids. <laughs> we changed the branding on that. All right, it's not it the other real one. sweet kids, yeah. Um, Anton's been <laughs> been watching you for a long time, so I think Anton was excited to have you on on the podcast as well. And cool. if you guys don't know um, uh, FPS Russia, him, the YouTube channel, um, he's now goes by the name FPS Kyle, is also on the, uh, on the PKA. So... Um, We'll wrap this one up here. Thanks for coming along, Woody. It was really good to have on, have you on as a as a different, you know, voice. I appreciate it. Yeah, represent the uh, level 28s out there. Yeah. And um, we'll, uh, we'll finish this one up here. But guys, uh, I'll get the, the links in chat spammed for uh, the podcast and also the other podcast members. And um, thanks again, guys. And this will be up on YouTube uh, probably day after tomorrow. So I put these all up on YouTube a couple of days after we, we do them. So thanks again, guys. Uh, I'll run the outro. I'll do a uh, I'll do an ad because I didn't run a single ad for the whole thing. And then we'll uh, send you someone in the Tarkov community. Thanks, guys.